testing one two one two testing testing one two one two testing one two testing testing one two one two testing one two one two sorry Brian testing one two one two testing one two There's number three. Holy Trinity Church today, whether you're a regular worshipper or visiting today or joining us online, a very warm welcome to each one of you. I'm going to ask our director of music just to lead us in a brief rehearsal of the song that we shall be singing after the first reading and before the gospel, the gradual hymn. So I'm going to hand over to Douglas now for that. Thank you, Douglas. Good morning. To you all, because it's for those online, they won't be able to you otherwise. And it's not completely unfamiliar to, to even those online, but you've heard it twice before. The first time was at Holy Trinity service during the first lockdown, so it was online. The second time was a year ago when the choir could sing, but you couldn't. So this is your first opportunity to sing it, and what I want to do, it's, it's an easy tune. 
It's all based on a pentatonic scale, which means nothing to you if you don't understand anything about music theory, but it's only the black notes on the piano, and it's only five notes. So I wanted to sing the four phrases to you, one at a time. The choir's gonna help me with this, and we're gonna, I'll sing it, and you're all gonna sing it back to me, and that way at least you have some familiarity when we get to sing it in the service. So here's the first phrase, and I'm just gonna use a, a nutrisyllable loo. Sing it contemplatively, but still with conviction. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. So our service will begin in a couple of moments with our first hymn for which we will stand. You'll find the words on the screen. If you want to follow the words of the service on your own device, there are some QR codes in the pews on the small cards. Do just zap those with your camera. That'll take you to the words for our service today. Thank you.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today is Trinity Sunday, our patronal festival. This church is officially named the Collegiate Church of the Holy and Undivided Trinity. So today we give thanks for this wonderful building, this house of prayer, this place of praise, but also for this community of faith based here at Holy Trinity, which expresses itself in so many different forms. Today we also contemplate the God who is beyond our imagination, yet who is present here to each one of us personally in Jesus Christ and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So as we prepare to meet with God through the words of the Bible, through the bread and wine of Holy Communion, let's open our hearts to God's presence now as we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of penitence today reflect on the nature of God as Trinity. Holy and triune God, you alone live in perfect relationship, one God in three persons, mutual and loving, ever seeking reconciliation and unity. We turn to you now and confess our sins. When I say the words, holy God, please respond saying, forgive us and restore us. Holy God, forgive us and restore us. I invite you, if you wish, to clench your fists as we reflect that God has called us to live in God's completion. Yet we confess that our relationships are imperfect. Lord God, we are incomplete without you. We are selfish and greedy and anxious and resenting. We sometimes feel the shame of our foolish behavior and brokenness. We have allowed sin to drive us apart from one another and from you. Holy God, forgive, forgive us and restore us. We hold our hands open, draw us close, and bind us together in your mercy, Lord. May we long for wholeness and peace. May we strive towards gratitude and grace. In the saving name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working power of your Holy Spirit, Holy God, forgive us and restore us. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all of your days. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear our first reading. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace, in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John.
Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And the reason I just had a word with the church warden and said, don't turn off the telly screen, because I need to show you this picture. Uh, the warmer weather over the last few days has started me dreaming about summer holidays. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was lost in a moment there, lying on the beach. Um, yes that lovely feeling of being on the beach. Do you remember as a child digging a hole in the sand and then thinking, ah, oh, wouldn't it be great to create a little paddling pool? So I'll just run down to the sea and get my bucket and I'll pour some water into the hole and fill it up. And you keep pouring it in and it keeps disappearing and you think, oh dear, this isn't working. Well, once St. Augustine, who was a philosopher and a theologian in the fifth century, was asked to explain the Holy Trinity and he responded to the question with a story of a child doing exactly that, digging a hole on the beach and then running down to the sea and getting some water and pouring it in the hole and realizing that the hole just wasn't going to fill up. The child was terribly busy running backwards and forwards, scooping up the water, pouring it in. But however hard he tried, he just couldn't do it. And St. Augustine said it's the same thing if we try and explain God just using theory and rational argument. Just as the sea was never any less for those tiny bits of water that the child took out, and just as the hole never really filled up with water, so our attempts to comprehend God using intellect alone just don't really get us anywhere. It takes something more in addition to our ability to think. There was somebody else who wanted to explain the Trinity, a well-known person, of course, St. Patrick, a little biased, one of my favourite saints. And I discovered, I was delighted soon after I became vicar here to discover that there is an image of St. Patrick in the beautiful east window right at the top of the church. It's the most wonderful window. It's worth closer inspection. Uh, it's called the Adoration of the Crucified. It has various different saints looking at Christ on the cross. And you see here, St. Patrick, he's on the left-hand side of that image. And the note underneath says, St. Patrick preaching. And I had another look at this in the week when I was preparing this sermon and looked more closely and discovered that if you look in St. Patrick's right hand, he's actually holding a shamrock. I hadn't spotted that before. And as you may know, that's famously how St. Patrick sought to explain the Holy Trinity. The shamrock, it's a form of clover, has the three leaves on one stem, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but as one, per one unity in God together. 
I rather like to think he's doing some kind of Bangra dancing there with his other hand. I'm not sure exactly what he was saying. But that's St. Patrick, who himself knew that God could not simply be explained, because St. Patrick had a nickname, which was a friend of God. He knew that God wasn't just an intellectual puzzle to be solved, but actually needed to be encountered as a living presence that we experience in our lives. The problem is I think often we do try to pin God down in some kind of neat formula. If only there was some undeniable proof that God exists, wouldn't life be so much easier? But Almighty God, creator of the universe, cannot be contained in this way. It's been said indeed that the crucifixion of Jesus can be seen as an attempt by humanity to try and fix God, to try and pin God down. I've got an image here of the crucifixion. You may recognize this. This is from the tapestry in Coventry Cathedral, that wonderful tapestry that stands at the East End. There's a sense in which when we crucified Christ, we were trying to stop God from interfering, to pin God down, to edge God out of the daily routines of our lives. But of course, God refuses to be bound. Nails or a grave cannot hold the Almighty. If you just turn your minds back to Lent, if you were here with us, we focused on prayer and on the importance of finding time each day to be with God. And of course, prayer in its simplest form is just the act of placing ourselves in a moment where we are more aware of God's presence with us. It requires setting some time aside, and as I've discovered, and I'm sure you have, to do that each day can be extremely difficult and challenging. The monk Thomas Merton wrote this, the reason why we don't take time is a feeling that we have to keep moving. This is a real sickness. The whole thing boils down to giving ourselves in prayer a chance to realize that we have what we seek. We don't have to rush after it. It was there all the time, and if we give it time, it will make itself known to us. And what Merton is referring to there is the presence of God with us. Both St. Augustine with his boy on the beach and St. Patrick with his shamrock, both have reminded us that God is far bigger than we can imagine or comprehend, yet at the same time, God is closer than our very breath. God has been there all the time with us. And God longs to make himself known even more to us. So we heard in our gospel today, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Being a Christian, being a member of a church, isn't always an easy thing these days, is it? The church seems to be facing so many problems whether it's dwindling congregations or crumbling buildings or arguments about gay marriage, there's all sorts of challenges. But I was struck recently when uh, I read a theologian who'd said that the biggest problem facing the church today is this. It's not the dwindling congregations. It's not the pressure on finance. It's this. Coping with the overwhelming abundance of God. That's our greatest challenge, because this is the God beyond our imagining. Yet God comes to us. And we shall sing in a short while, as our offertory hymn today, St. Patrick's Breastplate. It speaks of binding ourselves to God, not seek seeking God through thinking on its own, although that's important, but binding ourselves to God in relationship. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, we'll sing. I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead. God cannot be bound.
or fixed. But when we allow ourselves to be bound to God, to be held in God's loving embrace, then we can discover the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by doing so, we then also discover who we truly are as God's beloved child. Amen. Would you please stand? At this point in the service, we affirm our faith in the Creed, a particularly important thing to do today on this Trinity Sunday. And so to mark the importance of this occasion, we're going to sing our Creed as we declare our faith in God, the Holy and Undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. In place of our prayers of intercession today, we're going to be commissioning our church wardens and PCC members. They were all recently uh, elected at our annual meeting. And as we celebrate our patronal festival, this is an, a good opportunity for us to pray for and to affirm the role of these folk who have a very important role within the life of our church. In fact, yesterday we had an away day for our PCC. And we've got some pictures on the screen here. We went to a place called Red Hill Christian Centre, not far away, and we spent the day uh, reflecting on what our priorities are for the next five years. What are the things that we need to be focusing our limited resources on as a parish uh, and here at Holy Trinity Church, as well as the two village churches? Um, it was a slightly smaller PCC than we normally have. Uh, a number of people uh, are away at the moment, unfortunately. 
but we're going to commission nevertheless our wardens and those PCC members who are here today and pray for all of them. So I'm going to invite now the church wardens to come to the front of the nave, please. Uh, Helen Morillo, one of our wardens, sends her apologies. Uh, she's on pilgrimage at the moment with her husband Mike to Oberammergau to see the Passion play there. So um, I doubt if you're watching, Helen, but if you are, uh, we hope you're having a really wonderful time. Do come and stand in front of the altar, please. So Holy Trinity is unusual, uh, or the parish of Stratford anyway, is unusual. We have four church wardens uh, rather than the usual two, uh, Helen being the fourth. So we have Paul and Tim and Sharon. Uh, who actually are continuing as church wardens. We don't have any new church wardens this year. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, at our last annual meeting of parishioners, Paul, Helen, Sharon and Tim were elected as church wardens of this parish of Holy Trinity, Stratford-upon-Avon, with All Saints Ludington and St. Helen's Clifford Chambers. Church wardens, a question for you. Please respond by saying, with the help of God, we will. Church wardens, to you is trusted the care of our churches, their fabric and furnishings, and the greatest treasure, namely the people. Will you be faithful and diligent in your stewardship of our churches and in your service of the people of this parish? With the help of God, we will. Now I'm going to ask all those PCC members that are present, please, to stand. And we've got also at the back of the church a new member of the PCC, Sarah, uh, who is disabled and not able to stand. So I need to point out that you are <laughs> metaphorically standing uh, at the back of the church. So as I say, a number of our PCC members are away at the moment, but these folk here are members of the PCC. And they are here to represent all of you. So a question for PCC members. Please respond by saying, with the help of God, we will. Members of the Parochial Church Council... Sorry, there's Heather behind me as well, and Sam. Sorry, I shouldn't ignore you there. <laughs> Members of the Procul Church Council, to you is entrusted the guidance of our churches, the formulation of strategy and policy, and the management of our funds. Will you be faithful and diligent in your stewardship of our churches and in your service to our congregations? And another question with the same response, please. Will you work with the clergy, staff, and people of this parish in a spirit of cooperation, mutual accountability, and support to promote the mission of the church in this parish. With the help of God, we will. Now a question for all of you as the congregation gathered here. Please respond with that same response, with the help of God, we will. People of God, will you support your church wardens and PCC members by your prayers, encouragement, and cooperation? With the help of God, we will. So let us pray. O Holy Spirit, may these your servants be men and women of peace, prayer, strength, and kindness. Grant them an insight of your kingdom, a vision of your purpose, the guidance of your wisdom, and grace to be fellow workers with you in doing your just and loving will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I think we should express our gratitude to all these folks, especially the church wardens, for all that they do for us. Thank you, Thank you very much. So we turn now to the Liturgy of the Sacrament. Would you please stand for the peace? Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
On this special occasion, our patronal festival, we've got out our best family silver. The church plate that we're using today is only used at Christmas and Easter and on this Trinity Sunday. It's called the Woolmer Plate, was given to the church by the Woolmer family in the early 18th century. I'm telling you this because there are members of the Woolmer family, descendants, here today who've joined us. They're sitting in the pew just uh, halfway down on this side. A very warm welcome to Tim Woolmer, his wife Benny, and three of their offspring, Laurie, Kate, and Hannah. It's lovely to have you with us in our celebration today. So as we bring these gifts of bread and wine and our financial offerings to the altar, so we bring to God also our prayers and concerns for those in need at this time. We've been asked to pray for Anne McNeil, and we commend to God those who have recently died, among them Brian Brazier, Wendy Hughes, and Sheila Wollstoneholm. We pray for them and those who mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit 
inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father in the power of the Spirit, using the prayers the Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in us, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
We say together our prayer after communion. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. The notices now begin with the bands of marriage, which I'm very pleased to announce, between Jamie Crickmore and Carleen Poole. Members of the Poole family are here today. Lovely to see them on the screen as well. Between Andrew Tracy and Lucy, sorry, I didn't do that properly. Jamie Crickmore and Carleen Poole, both of the parish of St. Chad Sutton Coldfield. Between Andrew Tracy and Lucy Lee, Andrew of the parish of St. James Harvington, Lucy of this parish. Also between Paul Brannigan and Lucy Berman, both of the parish of St. James and St. Luke's Glossop. Also between Liam Sinnett and Sarah Homer, both of the parish of St. John the Divine Coventry. Between Sandy Mackey and Joanne Marybell, both of this parish. Between Joseph Bratt and Samantha Robinson, both of this parish marrying at St. Andrew's Cleve Prior. And finally, between Harvey Skinner and Libby Rawson, both of this parish marrying at St. Andrew's in East Leach. These are for the second time of asking. If any of you knows any reason in law why you may not marry, you know, why they may not marry. <laughs> it's been a long morning. <laughs> why they may not marry, you are to declare it. And we pray for God's blessings on those couples, especially those that are here with us today as they prepare for their weddings. Talking of weddings, Lola, our parish manager, got married in Greece last Saturday. I think we have a picture here, yes, on the screen, two pictures of the wedding in a beautiful Greek Orthodox church. So our congratulations to Lola and Tony. Uh, I think it must have been quite a brief honeymoon because Lola's back at work tomorrow, I believe. Um, but they're taking some more time off later in the summer. So congratulations to Lola and Tony. Wonderful news. Uh, this coming Thursday is the Feast of Corpus Christi, otherwise known as the Day of Thanksgiving for the Institution of Holy Communion. So we give thanks for this great gift of the sacrament in the bread and wine. We're having a special service here on Thursday at 7.30 in the evening. Do join us then. Now, we had a wonderful lunch last week. Thanks so much to the team who organised our Jubilee lunch. It was the most fabulous occasion. It was partly made wonderful by the band that we had playing over here uh, called The Pavilions. And I'm told that they're doing a performance uh, in Shipston this coming Thursday evening. Um, so if you want to hear The Pavilions again, uh, here's the details, part of the Shipston proms, uh, then you can, um, if you're not coming to the Corpus Christi service, I won't judge you either way, uh, you can go and watch The Pavilions <laughs> perform. Sorry, Pavilion Airs, they're called. This, dear friends, our beloved uh, brother in Christ, Neville Beamer, who sadly died uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, March 2020, uh, at the height of the, the restrictions. So we weren't able to have a proper funeral service here in church for him. He did have a funeral service, but very small. Um, and so I'm delighted that the family have, have now uh, organised with us for a special service of thanksgiving for Neville. That takes place this coming Saturday, the 18th of June, five o'clock here in Holy Trinity. Uh, our previous vicar here, Martin Gorick, now the Bishop of Dudley, is coming to give one of the tributes uh, and uh, other well-known public figures are also going to be speaking because Neville was very well known in his, both his church and his civic life. Um, the family have asked that it's a, a service of celebration, so no black, uh, come dressed to give thanks and to celebrate on Saturday at five o'clock here. I must just say, uh, we're having quite a busy day on Saturday because Angrad and Tony, who are here today, are getting married on Saturday afternoon. Uh, so we wish you every blessing, Angrad and Tony, for your wedding, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, other dates coming up, we've got a youth barbecue on the 26th of June. Uh, you can register uh, your young person uh, or a young person can register to come to that uh, via the website. And also we've got the next social event, which is the Wimbledon event. Uh, we're going to watch the Wimbledon ladies single final, singles final in the parish centre. Uh, and there's going to be a strawberry tea as well. What more could you ask for on an English summer day? Um, so there are tickets you need to sign up by the 1st of July. Uh, you can do that online 
or I'm sure if you don't have online access, speak to one of us and we'll sort you out with, with booking for that. I mentioned the Woolmer plate earlier. Uh, again, a huge uh, welcome to the Woolmer family. Uh, I believe, Tim, it's your, is it your 80th birthday next month? Um, so our warmest congratulations to you. Uh, could you just stand up so we can see who you are? Uh, Tim, congratulations on your 80th birthday. And uh, as well as the chalices and patterns that we used on the altar, uh, the, actually the best bits of the set uh, are a bit too big to use regularly. They're the flagons. They're up on the high altar. Uh, you, you're welcome if you want to have a closer look to, to go up to the chancel later. And also, of course, is the Woolmer chandelier. So our beautiful chandelier, which we usually only light uh, at uh, Christmas, occasionally at Easter if we're feeling brave, uh, that was donated uh, in memory of uh, a member of the Woolmer family as well. So there's quite a strong connection with this church. Lovely to continue that connection um, with, with the family today. Now, uh, Trinity Sunday seems a great day to celebrate christenings and baptisms. We've got some baptisms after this service. We've also got some families who are here because they've had children christened uh, in recent weeks. So it's a great joy to welcome Henry, uh, acquaintance, who's over here, who's going to come forward with family to receive his candle. And do we have Noah Parker here as well? Is Noah here? No. Any other folks coming to get their christening candles? No. Hey, Henry, you are the star of the show today. It's all about you. So let's give you your very own candle lit from the Paschal candle, the Easter candle. There we are. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? We'll put it in there to keep it safe. Who's going to hold the candle? Dad's going to hold the candle. <laughs> Come and stand a bit closer in the centre here. And we've got some words that we're going to say. And I'll just move my note here. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Henry, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one Spirit we are all baptised into one body. Henry, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Great, really good to see you today. Once you're back at your seat, you might want to blow the candle out. But keep it safe, maybe light it on the anniversary of Henry's baptism each year. That would be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? It's great to see you today. Thank you. Okay, folks, that is the end of the notices. Would you please stand to receive God's blessing? The Lord be with you. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.